American destroyer comes alongside a cruiser in Great Bitter Lake on the Suez Canal in Egypt. It brings Ibn Saud, king of the five million people of Saudi Arabia, to a conference with President Roosevelt, stopping off here on his return from the Crimea conference. The destroyer has been decked out with rare carpets for the monarch. This 800-mile trip marks the first time that King Ibn Saud has ever left his native land. <laughs> Colonel William Eddy, American minister to Saudi Arabia, accompanies the king and the official delegation of 48 members. Ibn Saud goes aboard the cruiser to meet Mr. Roosevelt. In cordial conversation with Colonel Eddy as interpreter, the Saudi Arabian king and American president discuss mutual problems of trade and relations with Saudi Arabia. Ethiopia, Haile Selassie, whose homeland was first to be conquered by the Axis and the first liberated. He is greeted by the President and the President's daughter, Anna Roosevelt Bottiger. Better communications and closer contact between Ethiopia and the Allies are stressed in the conference. Following up Mr. Roosevelt's desire, that heads of government should meet often to reach understanding of each other's problems. Full honors for a third royal visitor, Egypt's King Farouk, whom President Roosevelt had visited on his previous journey here for the Cairo Conference. King of the great and strategic territory from which Nazi armies were thrown far back three years ago, Farouk's Egyptian government made a formal declaration of war on the Axis on February 26. In extraordinarily intimate pictures, King Farouk and President Roosevelt talk over wartime and post-war problems. With the conclusion of these meetings with three important heads of states, Mr. Roosevelt nears the end of his historic 14,000-mile trip. Mm -hmm.